Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James, hope you guys are all doing well and I'm back with my top 3 DLCs for City Skylines. I do like to tune in and out of City Skylines from time to time, I've just done a playthrough on my channel and I do get asked what are some of my favourite DLCs so this list I've just compiled and thought a little bit about it and which DLCs do I feel that I would miss the most if perhaps I was to lose them. As of 2020, the newest DLC would be the Sunset Harbour expansion, and there are expansion packs that I would recommend over others, so perhaps keep your eye on the sales. One of the great things about City Skylines is its support on the mod scene. There's literally hundreds of assets, everything you can think of and download, and really bring your cities to life. But I'm just going to be concentrating on some of the paid DLCs and my favourites. In third place, we're going to talk about City Skylines Campus. Now this DLC I find I use on many of my maps. I do like placing a city campus down and this was the only university option we really had before they overhauled the education system. In this expansion you'll level up based on the end of the year and if you've met all of the requirements and you've produced a certain amount of academic works, you'll unlock new aspects to the city campus. Things such as university cafeterias and gymnasiums, eventually making your campus area more beautiful. You can see how far away you are from achieving the next level, five stars being the maximum. You can add different things as you level up your campus, such as the School of Law, which gives certain buffs to your city. There's others that give buffs to commerce and industry. When you reach a level five, you'll be able to open a museum and add some of the works of art that you put in there. But this is all good stuff to be able to level up an area, make it more beautiful. And the works of art that your students get, you can put in the museums. And the Vast City Sports is another part of this university. You'll be able to choose from five different specializations, whether it's basketball, baseball, or even an Olympic gymnasium swimming pool. You can place these buildings throughout your city. They don't actually need to be on the campus itself. And it's just another way to boost tourism and beautify up different areas of your city. It's nice to keep an eye on how well your team's doing. You can even add mascots. There's five different options to choose from when specializing in a student sports, but it's again, a welcome addition. There won't be many cities that escape a university at some point in my build. So into my second place choice, this one goes to City Skylines Park Life. In this DLC, you're able to build lots of different parks, but I like this one as you're able to finally freeform the way you place parks down. It makes your cities look less gritty and there's plenty of options for different customizable parks. You can build zoos and theme parks, even nature reserves. So there's plenty of options for the larger parks, but I quite like it for some of the fine detailing that you can use. You're not restricted to roadways. You can actually freeform some of these objects a lot easier. So I'll find in some way or another, I will use these assets and parts throughout a build somewhere. You have five milestones to reach, just like the University Campus DLC. And at these milestones, you'll be able to unlock more unique buildings, eventually being able to build a full park. It's not full on micromanagement like theme park manager or something like that, but it's a welcome distraction anyway to the normal part of the game. And I quite like having various little parks throughout my city. Lots of options in the policies mark that this could be a heavy advertising campaign or you specialize in recycling garbage. Either way it can increase popularity and get more visitors through the door. You also get the balloon ride, which I quite enjoy. I prefer this much more to the blimps. I like to see the odd balloon dotted around my skyline and jumping in and just taking a ride and looking over at the city. I find this looks a lot nicer than the blimps do. As well as the theme parks, you've got the nature reserve, which I find is a little bit more free forming, works a lot more towards the ocean, having jetties and other cafes that you can put down. But I certainly find that having this addition gets rid of you building in so much grids and just adding more uses to these parks. 
I find it very easy to get money with this. Maybe I find it quite easy just to use this as a toll and the way that it generates money. So I do find that it can bring a little bit of extra money into your city once you've got everything hooked up and right. You can also unlock park maintenance buildings. Again, increasing how beautiful your parks look, but it's a welcome distraction in the end from the base game. Just having these little extra areas to build in. I don't know, I do find that I use it quite a lot. So this one's firmly in here at number two and uh, somewhere throughout my city, you're always gonna find some parks and some more custom stuff really. So in at number one is the Industries DLC. I find this one added quite a lot more depth into the game. There was a lot of unique buildings and ways to be able to do things. I found that in the original game, perhaps the industry section was a little bit dull. You only get the generic industry and it, the way it looked, it kind of looked a little bit dirty. With this expansion, you was able to use ore and oil and it kind of got rid of that bulky industry sections which now I can use in little bits just throughout the city but to have an actual specialization to specialize a town is uh, really a welcome addition so as well as these great industries we also got the farmlands as well making some really rural sections of the map and I like doing this I'm from the UK so I find plenty of these fields when you look down at a map from the sky you can find a lot of areas like that so it's nice to be able to spread it out with some proper agriculture there's also login and both of those two specializations don't require any renewable sources but as with the ore and the oil these resources do run out over time as you collect more resources you will level up and unlock more things but I do find I like to switch the unlimited oil and ore mod on. Of course if you're playing with it off it is okay to build with farmlands and the logging industry those two are renewable. This DLC levels up pretty much the same as the other two in this time round we're looking at five stars and to grow you need to be able to employ more people and produce more resources and the more you do that the more that you can level up your specialization and unlock a whole bunch of unique buildings ones that work in tow with others so it really is a game of logistics as well perhaps you've got a logging plant on one side of the city a farming plant on the other and perhaps you're getting plastics from the petroleum section having all of these things link up through cargo may mean you can place down a car manufacturing plant and uh, I like the way that this works some of the unique buildings in this are absolutely huge and really do help to specialize certain sections of your city so I always felt that the generic industries needed a little bit of work and I do like having this level of micromanagement on top of my city and uh, I do find that I make plenty of money with it as well. And an honourable mention, this one only slightly came out of third place, is Green Cities. I do really use Green Cities every time I play. It's one of the expansions where rather than ploppable, you got more growable stuff. Over here you can see that we've got the energy efficient skyscrapers and the energy efficient lower density residential buildings and they offer a different unique element to your city. There are of course a few other unique things to this expansion, buildings and of course it's all about keeping the environment clean gardens you get a little bit of a mixture of things and parks in this expansion there is the option to also have a growable area of buildings that are more tech focused and these skyscrapers tend to be a lot taller giving your whole city a different skyline so those are the, my favorite three dlcs that i don't think i could live without with an honorable mention for green cities in a fourth place if we had one but yeah, I do enjoy tuning in from City Skylines from time to time. This is only my opinion on what I've had the most fun and probably the most time out of it. I like the ones that have added this extra level of micromanagement and they do all expand the game in a different way. So if you haven't experimented with any of them and you're looking for one in the sale, then uh, I recommend those three. Of course, there's plenty of them to look at, but quite a hard list to compile. And we've just done a playthrough 
of Complete City Skylines where I did a challenge to reach a population of 100,000. That wasn't a heavily modded series but I was thinking about coming back and doing a little bit here and there in a completely modded series where we get a lot of map space to perhaps play around with and just perhaps slowly over time even though it's not a complete thing but slowly over time build a city and really really spend some time on it it is a game i do like to jump in out of feel free to comment down below perhaps if there's some of your favorite dlcs that i may have missed out on that list it was a hard one to compile but i do think there is ones that are much more value for money than others but that's my list of my top three dlcs for city skylines if you're new here don't forget to check out my other city skylines content but until next time i'm james from complete games and i'll see you